Okay, so what? Yes. So I was saying that intellectual property is a very rich substance when it comes to the legal sciences. And uh, no one can argue about the jurisprudential importance of intellectual property, but it becomes a risk when we introduced uh, monetization or commercial dimension of intellectual property. So intellectual property commercialization has emerged as a, a very innovative domain for uh, companies and uh, in, in, in alongside research and development centers or research and development departments in companies as well as in universities, now they are opening a separate center of intellectual property commercialization. And intellectual property commercialization centers, they basically deal with the, the intellectual property of uh, uh, the people who are working there or the students and faculty if it is a university and how to bring money out of this intellectual property which is generated by the stakeholders present in an organization no matter it is a business or no matter it is a university so a little bit about the theoretical background that why intellectual property is important uh, and uh, Intellectual property is important because it is the oil of 21st century. Innovation is leading the legal sciences. I mean, the progression in the legal sciences is because of innovation. And innovation means intellectual property. So data is the new oil of 21st century. If you talk about uh, something which has a neutral legal value, it is data. Data is very important in 21st century. Data is the currency. And if we talk about, uh, uh, you know, earning of currency or earning of uh, innovative data, it is intellectual property. So intellectual property is the oil of 21st century. This is our friend Joseph Schumpeter, the Austrian uh, political economist. We all know about him from the World War I. And uh, he has introduced uh, so many uh, political economy theories, so many models he has given to the uh, business sciences or economy. He said that innovation is the driver of economic change, which means, which means that uh, the paradigm shifts in economy occurs when the innovations happen. So knowledge is the public good. What does it mean by public good? Public good means anything which anyone can use without paying anything. So when it comes to the knowledge, when it comes to the knowledge, there is no monopoly of anyone on the knowledge. Knowledge is the public good and anyone can use it. The free market will not provide enough incentive to invest in research and development. So he identified the problem. He said that free knowledge will not be appreciated. Knowledge is a public good, but if we will sell the knowledge without getting, getting any incentive or without getting any return, uh, there will be no motivation to do research and development. And uh, then it was his idea. I mean, idea is an old idea, but this was the first person who wrote about it, that monopoly is granted to those who innovate. So he said that if you want to innovate, you should give monopoly to those people who contribute to the innovation. For example, I will only have motivation to do something when I will get some incentives. And to give me incentive, you should give me monopoly. This is, this is the main idea behind his theory that if you want to promote research and development, if you want to you know, introduce a new substance uh, to the world, or if you want to uh, give progression not, not only social progression, but in terms of uh, applied progression as well, you have to give incentives to the people who are doing these things. So intellectual property, according to Schumpeter, is the monopoly, monopoly of, of the people. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you well, Mr. Amar. Okay, just just so keep you... just tell me if I'm if you cannot hear me. Yes, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we will tell. It's okay. okay very, good. very good. Very good voice. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So to encourage innovation, state grants a monopoly. 
monopoly means uh, state state grants certain rights for exclusive use of your product which you have invented so monopoly i have written uh, monopoly because only those people who have some sort of uh, uh, stakes only those people can get benefit out of the uh, invention so state ensures that you should get the incentive out of your production and state provides a mechanism to exclude others from using the idea without paying for it because knowledge is knowledge is paid and knowledge should be paid so that the people who are uh, producing knowledge should have some sort of incentive so monopoly of or intellectual property is also required so that the people should have some sort of incentive and also those people who are free riders they should have motivation to do the similar stuff so benefit is equal to long run innovation and cost is equal to monopoly cost when we talk about uh, benefits and cost in terms of intellectual property so the benefit will motivate the innovators to do more innovations in the long run and cost uh, will ensure that the people who are free rider or not doing any way, any innovation should have some sort of motivation to do innovations so why do we have property rights in general a lot of philosophers have wrote about the property right we know the theories of state of nature and how the state began and mostly all of all of the social contract philosophers have talked about giving property rights so that the state should be protecting the individuals fighting against individuals so property rights are there so that people should do and get benefit of only that what they are doing so one of the primary functions of institution of property is to encourage the efficient use of resources by internalizing externalities externalities are the free riding stuff so when there is a product many people many people try to get benefit of that thing without paying for it so that's why we have property rights so that the people who are free rider or not willing to pay for a product should be paying internalities are social cost for example when you smoke a cigarette you pay let's say 1000 soms for cigarette it is the original cost but there are so many other costs for example the smoking cause damages to your health smoking cause pollution smoking cause uh, you know when you smoke and you throw the cigarette it it, it litter our environment so all of these things your health your environment they also cost money and externalities are the monies or the social cost so when you smoke cigarette you should also pay for the health of the people and the environment as well that's why we have property right the property right is an institution which ensures that the people who are utilizing your product are also paying for the social cost attached to it imagine this is an example to elaborate the point that imagine there are two farmers they have land tools and weapons but there are no courts or no police so this is the original concept of social contract that people are in state of nature so imagine that there are two farmers they have land tools and weapons but there are no courts and no police so how do these farmers spend their time they will spend their time in investing in crops means they will go into field and they will be you know cultivating their fields and some of the time they will protecting their crops against you know other people so if there is no court no government no police then people will be protecting their property and people will be utilizing their property so just imagine in this world when there is no police no court no one is ensuring your right it will be a chaotic situation and that's why this is the argument behind getting property rights that we need property rights we need protection of our property so that we can concentrate on 
the productive side. For example, in case of this example, if uh, government is taking surety or if government is ensuring you that no one will harm your property, you will focus more on the production side. Yes. Is this property protected? If this property is protected, you are more productive. If your property is not protected, you are afraid and less protected and less productive. So in order to increase the production, we need more protection and this more protection comes from property rights. Why do we have property rights? One of the primary function of the institution of property is to encourage the efficient use of resources by internalizing externities to reduce the social cost I mentioned earlier. And without property rights, individuals lack the proper incentive to invest in the resource development and conservation. So if there are no property rights, people are afraid about uh, their property being lost they will have less motivation to invest into the productive side and they will be more worried about securing whatever they have. So that's why we need property rights. Now, if we discuss about uh, intellectual property, intellectual property is about incentivizing innovation. In the beginning, I talked about it, that we should incentivize, uh, you know, uh, whatever we produce. But there are some counter arguments as well. And we will discuss these counter arguments in the second half of our lecture. But first, why we need to incentivize innovation? First of all, we need to incentivize the innovations to give the due credit to the inventor. It is also important that the pro property rights should be there to protect the ideas and innovations. After making an innovation, disseminating it allows more people to enjoy its advantages. So it will also give me a motivation if I am inventor to share it with more people because more people will get benefit out of it. It will bring more profit to me. Without property rights, the inventor would try to keep the innovation secret in order to profit from it. So if there are no incentives of my production or of my innovation, I will keep this innovation to me and I will use this innovation only for me or for my family or the close ones. So that's why, that's why uh, we need intellectual property rights to promote, to facilitate, to motivate, and to encourage others who are not doing inventions to do inventions. Historically speaking, there are numerous examples when people actually guarded their intellectual secrets. For example, the Renaissance Venetians in Italy carefully guarded their glass making secrets. I gave this example because uh, I visited the Fergana Valley, uh, the city of Rishtan. There are many famous families who are doing very beautiful, you know, crafts on these uh, utensils or pots and they keep their art secret and then they deliver these art only to the disciples. So there is a very strict hierarchy and the concept of Ustaz Shagird. So the people who are masters, they teach this only to their students. And this is a, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, keeping the secret within the lineage. This is not a new concept. It has been uh, happening since centuries, but it is a good example of uh, the protection of uh, intellectual property. Uh, this is our friend Shakespeare, we all know about him. So the Shakespeare, uh, people say that Shakespeare also guarded the text of his play. So this is the modern concept of uh, copyright. And of, of course, at that time, there was no understanding of copyrights in, in this legal sense as we have today. But uh, about Shakespeare, it is said that he used to guard his, uh, uh, you know, intellectual work and he used to write his writing in a codified languages so that only Shakespeare could understand. So Shakespeare carefully guarded the text uh, is, 
is is uh, the complete analogous of today's copyright and this is a very famous example you might have heard about it at many places the coca cola example so the coca cola have kept their recipe secret for many years and uh, uh, it has been said that coca cola's recipe was memorized by you know two three people and whenever they had to travel they would travel in different vehicles for example if they are traveling from uh, uh, you know london to usa in aeroplane so they will travel in different aeroplanes so that if one plane will crash the other person will be there who has memorized this recipe so this is how the the companies which we see today are very much conscious about their intellectual property in the beginning when the system was not well established they guarded their intellectual property secrets so the patent protection patent protection is a modern concept but if we if we look back into the history and i gave some of the examples people were actually protecting their patents so now it is very important to define innovation what is innovation innovation is a creative idea and uh, in 21st century in the fourth industrial revolution if we talk about what is uh, innovation innovation is your invention i mean innovation is your product and also the commercialization means how you can make money out of it it is called as innovation now why i am saying innovation is equal to invention plus commercialization previously innovation was equal to invention if you say you have invented something it was considered as your innovation but today we should think about commercialization as well if you make something and you are not making money out of it it mean that you have done nothing it is just an idea so that's why it is very important from commercial point of view to define innovation and i think that it is the best definition that innovation is equal to invention plus commercialization that you have an idea and you are making money out of it so we can say that you have done innovation and uh, and if we talk about enabling innovation how you can enable innovation or what is the meaning of enabling innovation in different contexts for example in the context of uh, uh, university our university as well promoting innovation we promote uh, innovation by you know motivating our teachers and students to give us ideas and university try to monetize these ideas and try to bring benefit for the university and for the country as a, as a whole so enabling innovation means that how the stakeholders strive to bring benefit monetized benefit out of the idea this is this is called as Uh, enabling innovation so enabling innovation means when people are motivated to do something new to produce something new to give new ideas so that they can make money it is called as enabling innovation and there are so many factors uh, through which we can enable in innovation and one of the factors i have already mentioned that so that the inventor can get monetized benefit out of it so intellectual property is any product of intellectual protectable by law so any product there are so many products which are not protected by law so intellectual property is the product product of the intellect means it is not the product of the manual labor it is not the product of what you have made with your hand uh, or copied you know the the uh, making a copy of something is not intellectual work per se so intellectual property is the product of your thoughts product of your mind it is the product of intellect and it is product protected by the law so the law should be there to protect it we all know that not all the ideas are protectable by law there are certain ideas which are protected by law so not all the ideas are protected by law so intellectual property is the product of intellect which is protected by 
law and intellectual property employs ownership guaranteed by laws once protected if you get intellectual property right it's mean that the law is there to guarantee that only you will be getting benefit out of it intellectual property can be bought and it can be sold or it can be leased for example uh, coca cola in uzbekistan has uh, some sort of agreement with the original coca cola and it also comes with the leasing of intellectual property rights of using coca cola bottles and logos and all of other stuffs associated with coca cola so intellectual property can be used as an asset people can do buying and selling of intellectual property people can buy intellectual property people can sell intellectual property people can lease intellectual property this is the same analogous situation as of original property physical property so it can be used free of charge if the owner permits for example medicine there are so many medicines which have been patented by the inventors someone has made a medicine and later it allows people to use it for free so intellectual property can be used for free if the inventor allows you to use it for free and technology transfer is the process of identifying evaluating and commercializing intellectual property so if uh, if you talk about buying and selling of technology the so buying and selling of technology is associated with buying and selling of intellectual property because once a product arrive uh, in the customer's house or the customer's place it is very easy to copy it so whenever you do buying and selling of uh, technology usually you also do the buying and selling or leasing of intellectual property so in a university in a university why we should think about commercialization of intellectual property university setting is the best environment where we can bring monetized benefit out of intellectual work so in a university setting it is uh, not only about bringing money for the university and for the government it is also about bringing money for yourself okay so uh, in how the universities promote intellectual property we have seen it through different examples i will i will label them later in the lecture but the main idea behind promotion of intellectual property commercialization in university setting is to motivate the people to do something productive for the society and for themselves and for which university is a semi quasi or the formal environment which facilitate the process of innovation so just imagine just imagine that you are a scientist and you have a laboratory a personal laboratory so you may face many challenges challenges related to licensing and challenges relating to funding and challenges relating to human resources but if you are located or situated in a university all of these challenges can be overcome you can find money you can find funding you can find support legal technical and human resource support yes so that's why university setting is the best place to do the intellectual property commercialization now i will give you two different distinctions these are very important the first is intellectual property what is intellectual property and what are intellectual property rights it is very important from legal point of view so intellectual property as we have already discussed the intellectual property is the idea or the product of your intellect so intellectual property is information and knowledge it is intellectual because it is the creative output of yourself it is the creative output of your mind and we call it property because it is tradable we have already seen that you can buy intellectual property you can sell intellectual property you can lease intellectual property so that's why we say it intellectual property intellectual property means the property which you can buy and sell and this property is the output of your mind 
Now it is different from intellectual property rights. If you have intellectual property, it doesn't mean that you have the intellectual property rights. For getting intellectual property rights, you have to register your intellectual property with the state. And state will be there as a guarantee to ensure that your rights are not violated. These are not rights as other natural rights or other human rights. You can only claim your intellectual property right when you will register <laughs> your intellectual property with the state organization. Is there any question? Hello? No? I have one question. Yes. Can I give? Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Amarinus, we know uh, that uh, a lot of, uh, how to say, technologies or some articles which we write or create on uh, humanity sphere, it is too, too difficult to get uh, intellectual uh, property, um, how to say, patent. So what do you think, how is, uh, uh, how is, uh, should, how, how should be uh, the science, uh, scientific uh, personnel should uh, uh, protect their uh, their rights. So, because it is too difficult uh, uh, to uh, have to say, it is too difficult um, protect uh, the products or products which we create. That's why. What do you think? Is there any simple way, simple mechanism, uh, how, uh, how we can uh, protect our uh, result of our research? So uh, in the next slides, I will, I will show you some of uh, the arguments, some of my own arguments, which mm -hmm. are along these lines. And uh, my own understanding is that uh, there is no relationship between uh, protection of intellectual property and productivity. Mm -hmm. So productivity, productivity can be increased without ensuring the intellectual property. So in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, getting copyrights of your intellectual work, it is, it is a very good idea as an academician. But if you remember the previous slide, I have already mentioned that uh, innovation is equal to invention plus commercialization. So if you think that there is no monetized benefit of your intellectual work, then I think that there is no problem in letting other people use your ideas. Because in any case, uh, your mm -hmm. ideas will lead to the other ideas. Your idea is motivate to the other people to build their work based on your ideas, yes? Mm -hmm. So intellectual property oh, sometimes- yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Intellectual property sometimes put an hurdle, put an hurdle in dissemination of ideas. So if you have written an article and it is not in open access, for example, you know that there are articles you have to pay money for this. And many people will simply ignore those ideas. Oh, many, yeah. many, many people will simply not read these ideas just because they have to pay money for it. So when it comes to the intellectual production in terms of uh, scientific article, I think that it is much beneficial for you and for the society if you let it be in open access. Uh, is there any other question? No? Okay. So there are multiple, multiple ways to protect your intellectual property. Uh, you can do the patents. These are applicable to new inventions. And here I should give the example of uh, Tashkent State University of Law that the patents which we get for our scientific articles, they are the copyrights. They are not new inventions. So what are the drivers of patents? These are there to stop other people making, selling, or using your invention, yes? And it, it is obvious that if they have commercial benefits, only then you will be able to get the patent or you will have motivation to get the patent. In Uzbekistan, the agency for which is responsible for issuing uh, invention patents, it charge around $1,000. $1,000 to consider your application for initial review. It is a huge amount of money. So you will only apply for getting an innovation patent if you are sure 
that by paying thousand dollars you will be able to get five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars yes so there are so many inventions so many people are there with their patents who are not willing to apply for intellectual property rights just because they are not willing to pay this amount of money because the invention can be very genuine invention but they are not sure if they will get their money back or not then we have trademarks uh, registered design uh, know how know how is arguably some people think that know how is patentable or know how is intellectual property but uh, in many countries now they can do the patent of the ideas as well so know how is also considered as a uh, substance for intellectual property and then there is copyright and then there is database rights the uh, database rights are also you know applicable to the uzbekistan uzbekistan is also issuing uh, intellectual property rights for computer softwares or databases so there are multiple layers of intellectual properties for example if we take example of uh, a laptop this laptop has its invention patent it has its trademark like apple or dell or ibm it also have its uh, external appearance which is also protected under intellectual property then there is know how there can be copyrights which are installed into it and then there is a database uh, which is uh, also related to it for example how many computer have been bought and sold and so on so the point which i am trying to make is that there are multiple layers of intellectual properties which are attached to a single product and this is something this is something which i wanted to emphasize because all of us are colleagues and uh, we should realize this thing that authorship does not equal to inventorship that if you are getting patents of your authorship the articles which you have written and you have paid around 100 dollars it doesn't mean that you have get inventorship authorship is is different from inventorship and inventorship is directly related to the physical tangible product so which things are patentable or for which things you can get your intellectual property rights there are four criteria and four criteria are very important whenever you apply for something to get a patent first is that it should be novel novel means that it should be new it should be in inventive inventive means it should not be obvious to anyone for example you cannot get a patent on a spoon or a piala or or you know a shirt this is something which is obvious anyone knows about how we use spoon or why we use fork or why you we use pencil yes until unless you introduce a very innovative element into it then we should see that if there is any applicability means you can make money out of it or not i gave you the example that there is no logic of spending 1000 dollars for an application review if you cannot get 5000 dollars back so you should look into the commercial dimension as well and finally it should be enabling enabling means that it should progress it should motivate others to use it or it sh it should be something which people can build upon the other products or people can get benefit out of it immediately or maybe attach it to the other products available there so these are four criteria if uh, your product fulfill these four criteria then you can go and you can do the patent of your product and uh, this is very important to look into these things uh, what is prior art and what is not prior art prior art is you know uh, in philosophy we have a terminology called as a priori a priori in, is means that something which we already know so the prior art means something which people already know so if something which people already know you cannot get patent of so anything publicly disclosed about your invention it will be considered as prior art if you want to get patent of something you should keep it secret until unless you get your intellectual property rights in the form of a paper from the agency anything that suggests or alludes to something very similar to your invention 
so there are patents publications there are centuries old technologies yes cave paintings all of these things they are somehow considered as prior art means that people already know about it and it is very difficult to get patent of these things and it is it is you know arguably sometimes they companies spend a lot of money on on this to prove that it was not a prior art so this is also very important thing to remember and i have repeated it again and again and i have included it as a separate slide to you know emphasize on this point that all that is patentable is not necessarily commercializable so anything what you can get patent of is not necessarily bringing money you can get patent but it doesn't mean that you can make money out of it yes. so be very conscious in doing cost benefit analysis when you are getting patent of something yes. these are some of the resources where you can find patents which are already there for example google patents i always use only google patent it is it is more than enough you can uh, go on scopus and web of science databases they also have separate categories for finding articles and patents so you can find patents uh, on google patents uh, why it is important to find because uh, without knowing that someone else has made something similar to it or not you shouldn't go uh, for patenting your idea so it is better to do a prior research that someone else has made a similar product or not and then think about getting your idea patented and then there are so many paid you know software available and programs and websites where you can pay certain amount of money and there are experts who can help you to find uh, and help you to do the evaluation if your idea is patentable or not so now the these are these are some of the arguments uh, and my arguments are also along side these arguments there is no empirical evidence that patents serve to increase innovation and productivity means there is no there, there is no data available which shows that if you get more patents you will be more productive okay so patentability is different and production is different until the latter is identified with the number of patents awarded which as evidence shows has no correlation with the measured productivity so university can have 1000 patents but it doesn't mean that university is productive production is different and productivity is different so productivity should bring money if you are just doing patents but there is no money coming back it's mean that this is useless effort there is no production uh, there is no productivity a closer look at the historical and international evidence suggests that while weak patent system may mildly increase innovation with limited side effect strong strong patent system retard innovation with many negative side effects so the argument is that if you let people copy if you let people violate intellectual property rights it will increase production level it will increase productivity level but if you have very strong intellectual property rights protection system it will have negative impact on the on the productivity uh, i i'm not sure how much you are agree with this statement but it is pretty much convincing convincing for me this is the paper from where i have taken these these lines and he also talks about the patent puzzle so actually he is trying to make an argument that uh, people are getting patents but the level of productivity is not increasing as the numbers of patents are increasing yes? so in spite of enormous increase in the number of patents and in the strength of their legal protection we have seen no dramatic acceleration in the rate of technological progress that can be traced to increase patent protection and there is no major increase in the level of research and development expenditures 
ideally it should be like this that if a university or company is getting more patents they should be spending more money on research and development or they should be generating more funding but the results are opposite to it people are spending more time and resources on getting patent but in return they are not getting enough benefits yes so greater use of patents in mature established industries where major players seek to lock in trends this is another article i will share it later on and uh, it made this statement statement is very convincing and many people will agree with me uh, almost all of you will be agree with me that most of the wonders of the modern age from mule spinning to railways steamships to gas lamps seem to have emerged without the help of patents first industrial revolution second industrial revolution the first half of third industrial revolution there were no concepts like patent or copyright or intellectual property or people were not motivated to get intellectual property rights but there were inventions there were innovations and there were commercialization so i also think that there is no relation between productivity there is no relation between you know helping the people and getting the patents and historically speaking all the big inventions which he is referring or some of the others they were they were there without their intellectual rights being protected yes if the industrial revolution did not need them why have them at all so if the first industrial revolution second industrial revolution or the first half of third industrial revolution was without intellectual property protection why we need to have intellectual property rights now indeed the increase in the number of patents and the strength of legal protection has had negative consequences people have become more conscious about it yes. so granting of patents excites fraud stimulates men to run after schemes that may enable them to levy a tax on the public begets disputes and quells pitwax inventors provokes endless lawsuits and bestows rewards on the wrong person in simple english it's mean that the intellectual property or patentability force people to do fraud so that they can get patents of their invention so people first go on to the google patent they find a similar product copy paste it do some addition and introduce it as a separate invention because there is a lot of pressure by the institution to make patents comprehensive patents are taken out by some parties for the purpose of stopping inventions or appropriating the fruits of the inventions of others and this articles give some of some of the you know very good ideas how we can overcome this problem of patentability and a race of patentability yes so he says that we should adopt the rule of use it or lose it what does it mean it's mean that if you have a patent if you have intellectual property rights and if you are not using these intellectual property rights you should lose it means you will lose your intellectual property rights on this product so use it or lose it if you can use it then it's good if you are not using it then you you don't have intellectual property right on it make it easier to challenge patents now the chill the challenging situation is that uh, patent applications usually they are drafted by the lawyers intellectual property lawyers or business lawyers so when they draft an application they include all the dimensions and all the elements which are not directly related to this invention to make sure that someone else should not be able to make a similar product so this article is saying that we should make it easier for other people to challenge your product make non obvious standard harder so many products are there which people say that the this is not obvious that's why i should get patent so the article argued that we should make this non obvious standard harder yes, so that the people should think twice before saying that 
their product is not obvious. And then there is a suggestion that, that we should give patent for a shorter period of time, not for 20 years. Yes, now you can get patent for 20 years. It means that in 20 years, no one can do any modifications or no one will have any motivation to do you know, any research and development in the similar domain. So in order to increase the productivity, we should give patents for a shorter period of time. And are there any other alternatives if you think? Do you think that there are other alternatives how we can overcome this patent problem? Hello? We're, we're listening to you. Okay. Yes, so one of the one of the alternatives that if uh, you don't want to do patents, if you don't want to protect intellectual property, how you can promote innovation? Yes. So one of the ideas is that we should give prizes. This is this is you know from the NASA, and uh, this is the Google X Prize. So so some of these companies, some of these big tech joints, or some of these big uh, multinational companies, what they do they introduce prizes. They say that, okay, we will give you $10 million and a stake in our company if you will invent this thing. So this is a good motivation from two dimensions. First, you can get immediate money. Secondly, you can get persistence money. And third big benefit is that you can get targeted inventions. Targeted inventions means only those products which are demanded, which are required. So one of the things to promote productivity or the production, productive production is to introduce different prizes. For example, our Ministry of Innovation in Uzbekistan also introduce different competitions. So they say that we need products similar to this domain and we are willing to invest that amount of money. I think that this is much more beneficial for the society than people making their own products and seeking funding from the government. Government give direction and people by following these directions do innovation. This is more beneficial than giving, you know, uh, some sort of um, incentives by your own patent. Yes. So here are the roots of commercialization. This was the original topic. We will see this in, this, in detail as well that how you can do the commercialization of your intellectual property. Even in academic setting in the university, you can use one of these routes. So the route is, uh, for example, you have an idea and you think that this idea has potential impact. Then you can get protection of your ideas by getting a patent. Then you make prototype and then you market your product. Yes, this is the one route. The other route is that you have an idea and you share it with the expert community for a consultancy. And there you find, you know, stakeholders who are willing to help you in projection of your idea. The other idea is that you can get uh, your own patent and then you can seek investment. And uh, after seeking the invention, you can make a new company. This is called as spin off company. Spin-off company means new company. Or you can get your patent and go to an existing company and ask them to help you in marketing your idea. And they can, you know, do a contract with you. They can pay you money for your idea. Or you can work there as an employee. And I mean, any contractual relationship is possible. So the, this is a general scheme that how you can make money out of your idea. But the question is that how to evaluate patents if your patent is bringing money or not? The first is to do an economic evaluation. There is technical evaluation and legal evaluation. Technical and legal evaluation is usually done by the agency which grants you patent. But from the business perspective, we need to do economic evaluation. So there are two models. The first model is classic method model means you should think about cost approach, means how much money you will spend on getting patents. 
for example for getting patent you are spending $1000 is it logical to spend $1000 to get a patent then income approach okay you can spend $1000 but will you be able to get $1000 back and then the market approach means you spend money on your patent but you are sure that someone in the market will be interested in it and will be willing to pay more amount of money and will buy your ideas yes so there are in terms of uh, income approach there are discounting discount uh, discounted cash flows and real options for example discounted cash flows means uh, sometimes sometimes uh, people are very good in bargaining their intellectual property for example the software engineers they make softwares and then they do a very good bargain with the company and company sometimes give them share in the production and share in the company yes so sometimes they just pay them hard cash and take their ideas and if we talk about quantitative methods in terms of quantitative method these are the same as classic method but they are more numerical for example when someone someone do the economic evaluation of your patent and your patent is very genuine it will bring money sometime the renewal costs are much more higher than the original patent so it is not an economically suitable invention yes. so there are different value indicators which shows that if you have to renew if you have to buy if you have sell if you have to give it on lease how much money you will be generating or how much cash will be flowing back and through if you deal in this intellectual property so these are the quantitative method by using these evaluation method you can tell that if you should buy this patent or not how to identify intellectual property values as i already mentioned that it is very important to identify if someone has intellectual property value or not or someone is thinking that it should have a value or not for example i have so many ideas you have so many ideas but not all the ideas are valuable this is a good example so foot shoe with screw with cleats means there are small nails in the beginning no one might have thought about them but uh, this is a very you know expensive innovation and uh, very useful for from sportsman perspective yes and this invention for example in the beginning no one have thought about that this could be a very expensive or useful invention new usefulness all of us are agree that is it is useful but in terms of uh, monetized benefit it is very expensive product in today's market so this is an ip bundle ip bundle shows i mean this is something in your mind whenever you do the valuation of intellectual property that there is a patent and uh, commercialization and the know how circle shows that what out of this patent you can use for making money and what is already known or it is your know how but the similar know hows are there in the market so inside the market you think about commercialization you think about development and then you think about patent or the vice versa you think about patent and then you think about development and commercialization and then you find a market for it and this graph shows a nexus between potential cash generation and time to achieve the effect yes so it shows it shows that the 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 radical innovation radical innovation which is the final step of any innovation cycle radical innovation you can say that perfection of anything perfection of anything by the time the product will go towards pro pro uh, perfection it will start generating money but the inventor should be very patient person means he should not be conscious about making money at the time when people are looking about other alternatives so when there are no other alternative you go to the next step and by the time you have radical invention it mean you have money and you are leading the the market and you have monopoly on it yes 
so this is the classic method this is the classic method when you buy when you buy or sell a house when you buy and sell the house you think about all of these things the infrastructure year of construction the how many square meters situation location yes how many stories are there what is inside similarly when you deal in intellectual property you think about all of these things in detail yes so here i am going to give you the invention of intellectual property in the university and then i will show you some of the uh, practical examples so how you you how you do the invention in a university setting so first of all you identify your intellectual assets which is related to you know your thought process you have an invention then you will ask your research and development uh, center if there is any to do the assessment of protectability that you should protect it or not then they will think that they should do the commercial evaluation or not which means that should they be willing to spend money or not as i told you that 1000 dollars in uzbekistan is a huge amount of money so why university should pay 1000 dollars if you think that you have an invention if they are not willing to get if they are not able to get this money back okay so if you pass this stage means someone is there to to give money for the application then you can consider your, yourself as an inventor because you have got this intellectual property then it is up to the university that they will use your product as a commercial instrument or they will just let it hanging there that we have made an innovation yes so they can think about making it commercial then they will find a license they will make a new company or they can contract with an existing company here in this in the in the right side i can give you an example that our teachers they think about so many things and our universities give these things to the ministries which is this stage licensing and existing corporation so you think and you give these ideas to ministries it is also a route of commercialization alternated that you make your own think tank or research center or your own institution and you make money out of it and then you can sell it to the ministry yes so how the university is different from a company when it comes to the making money in university professors or teaching assistant they are considered as employees of the universities and uh, whatever they produced usually it is jointly owned by the professor and the university someone has told me that uh, in our university also we have a similar contract with our employees the professors that the intellectual property will be you know the property of the university or it will be jointly shared i, I mean there is a similar clause so there is no obligation to commercialize the intellectual property develop although it is encouraged in the university setting the more focus is on the production of intellectual property and uh, they are not serious about commercialization of it a good example we have seen recently when all of us got patents so everyone was more focused on getting patent rather than to make money out of these patents yes but in the company setting it is different intellectual property solely belongs to the company if you are working in the company and you make something new it belongs to the company because company has provided resources for the invention yes and then there is a very strong nexus of uh, profitable sale of product means the only those inventions which have uh, some sort of commercial benefit or monetized benefit they will be promoted so this is how the university is different from a company so many employees they are hired by the company so that the employees can give all the rights of intellectual property to the company and in return what will happen in return the company will give salary and benefit to the employees yeah. so this is this is a company commercialization cycle in terms of intellectual property the company hires people so that they can produce intellectual property they take their intellectual property 
and in the return they give them salary and benefits so this graph shows the innovation the innovation progression today we are standing here when we have artificial narrow intelligence we soon will achieve artificial general intelligence which means that we will have a robot which will be as intelligent as the mind of a human and then in future there is a possibility that we will have a human too human too means when we will be able to shift our conscious into an other physical being in another robot or maybe in another body yes so at that time when we will achieve artificial general intelligence or artificial you know uh, super intelligence or human too this will be another revolution or paradigm shift in the intellectual property then we will be again discussing the same lecture so if you are still with me i i want to show you some some of the interesting things uh in terms of uh, hello hello mr yes. professor we are listening yes. you yes i just wanted to show you uh a university's inventor guide can can you see this not yet uh, not yet but okay. i think this one yeah yeah yes yes can you see this so this is a inventor guide university of macmaster has made it for their teachers okay so i mean these are the universities which are promoting the research culture so they have made this guide for their teacher to show them that how they can help how the university can help the teachers to make money out of this so i will just quickly go through it and i will show you the process yes so they say that you will do research and you will do invention disclosure we will do assessment and we will do intellectual property protection we will do marketing licensing commercialization and revenue will be shared between you and us so in this guide they have mentioned the process that teacher should be doing research and there are different departments who are dealing with each of these points and then finally the revenue will be shared between the participants yes. so it is it is i think a very good incentive by the university where by using different schemes and different you know uh, there there is a question answer session how this will happen and how the university and professor can collaborate yes. so i think this this is this is really good in, initiative of the university which will promote invention innovation and commercialization and you know the thought thought process and people will have really good incentives if they make something new new for them yes so uh, now i will just show you an other very interesting slide before concluding before concluding i wanted to show you some of the uh, interesting patentable inventions which have been done so can you see this new slide yes 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 so if you talk about what is patentable or what is not these are some of the examples from united you know united states patent office is the most uh, reputable it is uh, even superior to world intellectual property organization yes so it shows that someone has get the patent of how you will sequence the pages page 1 page 2 page 3 <laughs> so how you put the pages in the file someone has patent of it yes. it is it is very interesting yes uh on the other side it is very stupid so someone has a patent of a sandwich and uh, you know to get a patent from united state office it costs sometime 15 to 20000 dollars and someone has actually got a patent of a design of a of a sandwich yes how you can make uh, how this look like someone has a patent of the pipe to you know wine to testing the wine wine testing straw someone has the patent 
and someone has a patent of uh, glasses someone has a patent of quick change pants how you can quickly change the pants and someone got patent of it and this is even funnier that bird diaper someone someone actually thought about it i don't know why he felt the need of making this sort of you know invention but for the sake of invention it is an invention the bird diaper yes what is this what is this pump pumpers pumpers dilia patitsa uh -huh, uh -huh. okay understandable <laughs> someone someone has paid actually 15 to 20000 dollars for getting patent for this yes and uh, this is anti eating face mask it is also an original patent anti eating face mask and uh, reanimated head for for the video games and this is butt kicking machine and it is an original patent <laughs> someone has got the patent of of this thing as well which means that he has spent 15 20000 so the point which i'm trying to make is that sometime people on the name of uh, you know uh, invention go crazy about about things just to get a patent they are willing to do anything and they are willing to spend a lot of money yes. so coming back to the original point and to summarize everything commercialization is very important from the incentive perspective but commercialization is bad that it is promoting pseudo science and some of the examples i have so shown you in these patent examples that people just for the sake of getting patents have made inventions which are patentable but apparently have no benefit for the mankind and uh, in terms of commercialization i think that i think that the incentive should be obvious incentive should be easy and incentive should be promising for the inventors so that he has motivation to do more inventions and in terms of uh, uh, from where we should start we should start from the university because it is a perfect perfect climate with all the intellectual and material resources available and for this purpose university should take some serious decisions to promote innovation cultures among the scholars who are working at the university yes so now we have like 5 10 minutes if someone has any question we can discuss about the questions otherwise uh, we are good to go hello no one are you there yes we are here okay so 